Hi, I'm attorney Gregory Dell, and today I'm joined by attorney Rachel Alters, and today we are going to discuss Lyme disease and how it relates to a short-term or long-term disability insurance claim. Now, Lyme disease has been a very controversial diagnosis and especially made even more controversial by disability insurance companies. Rachel, what is your experience in working with people who have been diagnosed with Lyme disease and why disability insurance companies tend to challenge these claims? Well, Lyme disease, Greg, is, as you said, a very controversial diagnosis, and about 30,000 patients a year get diagnosed with Lyme. Um, what happens is Lyme is contracted when you get bitten by a, it's called a black-legged tick, who's carrying the bacteria. Once you get exposed to Lyme disease, you can have flu-like symptoms, which can be, you know, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, fever, and it can be detected by a, lab, a blood test that's done at a lab, and it can show that you have a certain bacteria in your blood that's caused by Lyme. The treatment of these Lyme disease is usually a, a two to four week dose of antibiotics, and once those antibiotics are given, technically most doctors consider you to be free of Lyme disease. The problem can be that oftentimes, even though your blood work is not showing up as having Lyme, you still have all the subjective symptoms of Lyme disease, which can also go into your heart. It can be um, cognitive symptoms as well, affect your brain, like an encephalopathy, and can have long-term effects over your lifetime. Talk for a minute. You just mentioned the, mm -hmm. the, um, the symptoms that people can have from Lyme disease. Now, related to more to the, client, the many clients that you've represented that had Lyme disease, what kind of symptoms do they have, and how is that limiting their ability to perform their jobs? Sure. Um, for an example, we have clients that are even, you know, executives in large companies who have, they're running the companies on their own, they have jobs that require a lot of mental focus. So the problem with um, the diagnosis of Lyme is that it can affect their ability to think and concentrate. So for example, one of our clients, she has a high powered job, she's been working for approximately 15 years at this company as a CEO, and she contracted Lyme by riding a horse. She was bitten by a tick and all of a sudden she experienced flu-like symptoms. She couldn't think, she couldn't concentrate, she couldn't balance, she got very dizzy and she wasn't able to do her job anymore. So she ended up filing a, a disability claim with her insurance carrier. And now they are actually challenging her claim saying that they don't believe she has Lyme. Okay, and she continues to have chronic difficulties? Oh yeah, she has many chronic difficulties. She, they even sent her, the insurance company sent her for an independent medical examination and it's all documented that she had a hard time walking into the room, she couldn't count by sevens, she couldn't remember things and, and it's very stressful for her. She's, you know, a young woman, 40 years old and a mother and she's also a high, you know, she's a CEO of a, a very prominent company. Now, I know there's some generally accepted guidelines or protocols for testing for Lyme disease. Can you talk a little bit about what those are? Sure. Um, and again, Lyme disease is very controversial, so a lot of doctors don't believe that chronic Lyme exists. So what they do is when, when somebody exhibits early stages of Lyme, they'll send them to a doctor. The doctor will send out blood to a lab. The problem is a lot of, lab, um, a lot of labs aren't doing the standardized testing and their testing isn't, doesn't follow a protocol that is required. And it has to show that you have not only an IgM bands be positive, but that IgG bands are positive as well. It gets a little complicated, but long story short, if you don't have positive IgG bands, they don't consider you actually having Lyme. Who's they? Um, they could be, you know, the, well, they could be the insurance carrier and they're hired experts because oftentimes their experts look at these lab results and they'll say, well, yeah, they have all the subjective findings of Lyme disease, but their lab tests show that they're negative. So they won't consider them as having Lyme. They, they say, well, maybe they have fibromyalgia or some other cognitive disorder, but it's not Lyme. Right, so that's been my experience with a lot of the Lyme, <clears throat> the Lyme disease claimants who don't have necessarily the exact positive testing that they're supposed to have, is that the disability insurance companies will push the, pe push the claimants to go for neuropsych evaluations, and they'll try to make it into a psychiatric claim more so than a Lyme disease physical condition, which has all of the physical manifestations of the different things that a claimant can't do. Absolutely. So that's something that if you have been diagnosed with Lyme disease and you're contemplating filing a claim or your claim has been denied, that you have to be aware of, that they're going to try to say this is a psychiatric condition and make it look like you are 
having some somatosform disorder or other types of disorders that aren't physical but psychiatric. And then you also said they may try to say you have a chronic fatigue or you have a fibromyalgia or some other type of condition and try to get you into that limited self-reported pain limitation, which could be in some policies a 24-month limitation. So I know when you and I handle these claims all the time, we're not only trying to prove to the disability insurance company that the person is indeed disabled by Lyme disease, but we're also trying to make sure their benefits will continue for as long as the person feels that they can't do their job as a result of the Lyme disease. Absolutely. So if you have been diagnosed with Lyme disease or any of the other medical conditions associated with Lyme disease, feel free to call us at any time for a free consultation. We will review your claim and let you know right away whether or not we think we're able to assist you.